Well, welcome, um, Nicole McLaughlin. Um, we're super excited to be working with you um, online and getting some work in person here soon. Um, I 99% sure, yeah, I am. I am 100% sure. The way I found, I stumbled upon your work on Instagram and in particular the uh, Indigo series you were working on and it, and it really blew me away immediately. It was something I wanted to learn more about. Um, I love when artists take the leap of not just being all clay. You know, I, I went to um, Alfred University where sometimes there can be this sort of purist mentality of, you know, clay all the time or yeah. not at all. And um, yeah, I, I, I really respect artists that don't kind of dream in one material. So stumbling upon your work has really been, been um, wonderful. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. Um... Instagram is such a good platform, right? <laughs> it, it really is. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have approached or asked me, you know, I, I give lectures every now and again, and people will ask, like, how do you find artists? And what's your research look like? And more and more, it's like going through social media. I mean, yeah. that's where we're like, I'm mining information. I'm mining images and seeing where those lead me to other, other people. And, and um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's changed the way that we all kind of can uh, transmit and share share ideas and content so that's pretty pretty neat um but for those you know some of our audience i think might already be familiar with your work but i know a lot of folks might not be and um where i think a great starting place would be would be to uh i'd love to learn kind of how you got into clay and a little bit about your background and kind of the journey from from there to like where you are today so if it, i'll just let you kind of dive in and um, i'd love to hear more about that yeah, awesome. Um, well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, and I hope that if you're not familiar with my work, this will kind of get you to follow along. Um, but I first got involved with Clay at high school, um, um, a boarding school. It's called Tabor Academy in Marion, Massachusetts. Um, I came in as a sophomore and we have a spectacular, I say we have because I now am a teaching fellow at the school. Um, but when I was a student, um, the studio captivated me. Um, I had never seen anything. I didn't know that ceramics uh, existed in the way that it did in the studio here. Um, so I took a few classes and my original intent was to explore other mediums. And I just, as soon as I touched clay, I kind of fell in love and I decided that I was gonna further pursue that. And I applied to a couple of art schools and ultimately ended up at the Kansas City Art Institute. Um, went there and I graduated in, the, in May of 2020, so this past May, um, and have now come full circle and now I'm a teaching fellow at Tabor Academy. Um, so that's how I got started. Um, but a lot of my work stems from my upbringing and my background. I'm a first generation Mexican American. My mom's from a small town in Mexico called Cuernavaca. Um, and I spent a lot of my early childhood there. Um, and that has proven to be super influential to my work and my artistic practice. Um, and it wasn't until I went to the Kansas City Art Institute that I kind of discovered how important that was to my identity and kind of rekindled that connection. Um, and I have since uh, started implementing um, fiber practices um, and that kind of stems from my interest in craft traditions from Mexico. So I work a lot with um, Mayolica, um, or as we would call it in Mexico, Talavera, um, and kind of thinking about the cultural significance um, and what that says about where it came from. And the tradition was brought to Mexico from Spain. Um, and in 2019, I was given a grant through KCAI to go to these Talavera workshops um, in Puebla. It's a town called Puebla. And that's really the turning point of my work. Um, that's kind of when I started implementing fiber into the work. Um, Is that because they were doing fiber down there? So it was not just a clay? It was, it was, you... it's funny because the grant was not to go and study fiber processes, but it being in Mexico and thinking about my work in context with the, that environment that I was so familiar with kind mm -hmm. of spurred this idea. So I started to overfire the Mayolica because I felt like it was important to go and learn the tradition as it was before I started manipulating it and kind of using it as my own. 
-hmm. So when I came back from that trip, I started over firing the male Kitakon 6 and layering a, like a runny glaze over it to try to get that pattern to dissipate and, and render my control over it, right? Almost like a symbol of, of my matriarchal lineage coming down to me and how those kind of traditions change, right? My grandmother mm -hmm. and my mom have no, no control over what I do in my life, right? Um, so I felt like this open space in my work for another material that could convey that um, and that passage of tradition. Um, and the way that I was using the Mayoka felt like almost like another iteration of that tradition um, and fiber just kind of lent it lent itself to creating that kind of movement. Um, and I started researching other craft traditions because I was so interested in the Mayoka and it brought me to uh, different ceramic traditions um, in Mexico, um, particular, particularly uh, indigenous traditions. So um, market pottery, um, which is, is very simple. And, and most of the time it's just some white decoration on raw terracotta. And then I started looking in the fiber traditions too, like embroid traditional embroidery, um, different kinds of embroidery from different regions, um, natural dye. Um, and that's what led me to the indigo. Um, in the indigo okay. series. And so now I'm getting a different perspective on the indigo. So that is Maolica as yes. a glaze. Yeah, yeah, okay. I did not, you know, when I looked at the work, it's easy to, I knew the clay was still dark, right? The clay still, mm -hmm. yeah. I yep. knew it was still a, a dark body under there, but I was operating on this assumption that it was just like a, um, a, a white, yeah, I didn't think it was Maolica. That, that's a whole nother wonderful layer there. Yeah. Um, would you talk a little bit about the Bordados series? Um, is that what you're calling out? And forgive my, my naivety here with technique. Um, some of the, the clay decoration that I see on some of that does, like I've seen that kind of in tile work, right? Where it's like you're um, laying it on maybe with like a resist around it. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's something so, that's happening there. Mm -hmm. The Bordado series um, are a series that I started um, this fall. And okay. I was looking at, I was already kind of very much inspired by traditional like peasant um, dresses. Um, my grandmother would wear them around the house and I wore them as like a little girl in Mexico, um, but they're very like an ornate embroidered kind of collared um, dresses. And they have that kind of like imagery and those bright colors and, and floral patterns. And I kind of started taking that image and putting it on my vessels. And I was already kind of was, but I was kind of manipulating it. And like I said, letting the glaze flow and, and move and change that. Um, but then I kind of had the idea of referencing that directly. So I started to drill into the surface of the clay and um, physically embroidering into that after it was fired. Um, and it, it started to become like a, a very meaningful component to the work. Um, this idea of like uh, handwork or woman's work and, and the references that it made to the dresses and both personally and culturally. I would imagine there's a lot of foresight in, I don't know, what the right word, I guess mapping that out then. You're like you're yeah. thinking that, that far ahead with a ceramic blank, so to speak, as well. Yeah, I find because I'm integrating fiber into my work, I have to kind of think two or three, four steps ahead, right? Um, yeah. And especially with the Bordello series, I tend to do a lot of drawing. Like I, I do a lot of pattern generation and, and kind of figure it out um, so that I can transfer that and drill the holes prior to the firing. Um, so the process um, is really quite lengthy when you, when you take a look at it, it doesn't stop after the firing. Yeah, that leads me to a, another kind of random question. Um, for your just in general i'm always kind of curious about this with different artists is is your idea ideation process do you like to sketch out ideas first or do you find that i mean obviously i know the answer and i guess the technical part of having to map some things of course but like do you find that um yeah i guess ideation comes from two-dimensional work for you or or that hands-on ex experience i'll use myself as a brief example a lot of times when i'm touching clay i'm like oh now i have another idea that i want to go do through the visceral experience of, of creating. Yeah, I think um, I think it's both. And it, I think it's dependent on what I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. Like with the Indigo series, I find that 
drawing really helps because the way that the fibers fall um, is something that happens on the last step of the process. And so if I can just come in and sketch something quickly um, mm -hmm. to see like maybe how do I manipulate the bowl or how do I want the faint fiber to hang over one another um, if it's layered, um, where do I want it to fall in relationship to the, the, the like swoop of the ceramic component. Um, but then when it comes to like physically making like more functional work or, or, um, or pots or the bordado series, like I tend to just uh, prototype in clay, like just sit down at the wheel and, and make things or, or take a mold that I have and then make the form and then alter the form. Are you using molds as like press molds? You, yeah, um, some slip of my, anything, the, the oval uh, bordado series. Um, the ones with like the scalloped edge, those are made yeah. off of a mold and they're hand built. Um, okay. So I kind of go between the wheel and, and the mold. Cool. Yeah. You know, something else I wanted to sort of pay compliment to your work as well, um, is I, I really also something I enjoy when I find, um, or not that I found you, uh, discover someone in, in, that's working both functionally and conceptually. Um, and I think your work is very successful in both those realms. And I like how I, I sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with this. I see artists that um, functional work networks look nothing, you know, like it's like two different people yep. sort of thing. It's like a split personality thing. And I, I think there's, um, yeah, a great connection between the work and how you translate, you know, kind of back and forth in, in those um, arenas of, of function and non-function. Yeah, I think that the materials and processes that I use are so closely connected. Um, yeah. But I think there's a, there's a good tie between the two. Um, but it's funny because when I was in, in school and at KCAI, um, you know, like there was, I remember one of my professors said like, you know, you grew up making pots. It makes sense like why you make the work you make, right? But I use mm -hmm. the vessel kind of to reference um, especially with the indigo series, um, like a conceptual way of thinking of the vessel. Like what does the vessel mean? Um, mm -hmm. And what's important about its history or its relationship to gender. Um, and so I think that ties into the more functional work. Um, it kind of brings it home. Yeah, okay, I see that, I agree. Um, so you kind of brushed on this earlier. I think I do. I wanted to call attention. I think it's really neat that it's kind of come full circle for you that you're back in Marin and teaching at a place that you you were when you were a high school student. Um, yeah. How, how has that been? How long have you been back there? Actually, let me start there. Um, I started in September. So. Oh, okay. So new. Um, yeah, so my transition from school to teaching was fairly quick. I moved away from Kansas City in May and um, moved in here in July and started working in the studio. And, you know, it's been great to come back to the place where my love of ceramics and art in general was sparked. Um, and I'm back with a whole different perspective and a, and a different body of work and obviously a very different person. Um, yeah. So it's been kind of interesting to jump back into this like old version of myself um and a lot of the people still know me here there's a lot of um faculty who knew me when i was a student and so for them to kind of recognize a difference in me and see what i've been up to for the last four years has been really cool but also to kind of spark interest to some of the students here and be like this is you can take this beyond high school, right? And for yeah. me, it happened because I was interested in pursuing it, um, but I didn't really know what was out there. And so I think that the fellowship program, which is the program I'm in right now, um, allows for young artists to come in and expose students and, and these young kids to, to different ways of working in ceramics. Um, and just like a higher level of, of what making art mean is, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's so important. I know, you know, my high school teacher was who inspired me, you know, I was loved ceramics, but had no idea that you could do anything. You know, it sounds silly to say it now, 20 some odd years later, but it's like, oh, you can do something with that. You know, I'll never, I'll never forget, you know, her saying like, you know, you can like try and make a career at this. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's just as the you know the, the to to turn turn those light bulbs on for mm-hmm. for future generations is, is really yeah. special. And our art department is so wonderful. I mean, the facility that we have here it's it's huge and it kind of like looks onto the harbor and. We have, a, you know, like gas firing and wood kiln firing and, and the kids really get a full experience of, of what ceramics is, which is so rare in high school. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's great resources. Um, what was I going to say? I, I want to respect your time today, too. Um, are there things, how are things going since pandemic for you and I mean it sounds like obviously you're transitioning really well with a new job and studio access and um kind of a good place um anything you want to elaborate on there or yeah I would say you know. graduating from undergrad and not knowing what you're going to do next is scary um so I've been very lucky to to have a job and be work in a studio environment that I love um and have studio space so that that kind of support has has been amazing um but yeah the the art world's a little weird right now with covid um but i have been so lucky to have a couple of exhibition opportunities and just putting myself out there and and trying to grow my social media you know and and taking on commissions and and that is really kind of the greatest support that you can show a young artist is like wanting their work and and being willing to to purchase and support their practice um so that has been um an awesome experience for me yeah you know on the other side of that i've talked you know folks that have become friends over the years collectors where something that i think resonates with them too is is knowing that they had an impact you know at a mm-hmm. time in someone's life when you're trying to figure stuff out you know you're trying to figure out your career path and if it, this body does this body of work make sense is the show any good is, what am i what am i doing and then like sometimes that pivotal purchase that um that, yeah. that you know kind of affirms all the the toil you know yeah. all the, the stuff you've been working through to get to that place so yeah. can be yeah. a rewarding yeah this um I've also been very lucky in the sense that I've had some um publications come out and my modern met and this is colossal and and that has been absolutely incredible because it's I'm yeah. reaching a wider audience you know and my work is getting out there and people are seeing what I'm doing and, and I think that they they respond to it yeah Mm -hmm. well i certainly do i hope our audience does i think it's i think what you're doing is great (laughs) and you you know as i said earlier you know really grateful to be working with you um you know something i hope to continue is uh finding ways to continue to work together um and and kind of continue to build this relationship um and of course when things normalize maybe get 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 you all out to Portland for a visit or trying to yeah, do something I'd love in to the physical of the gallery out. so yeah. yeah yeah it's on my list I, I really want to go and see that part of the U.S. so it's a good spot it's a little soggy right now but it's a good place yeah. Yeah. yeah well Nicole thank you so so much for all your time today um again I look forward to working with you in the future and um yeah thank, thank you thank you so much yeah I'll catch you later all right bye, bye.